Hello everybody, this is Isaac Ashby from Steam Thinkers and welcome to today's live video. Today we are talking about failure. Failure within ourselves, but most importantly among our children. Because one thing that I've noticed that is uh, that as I work with kids in talking about failure, or in, not, I'm sorry, when talking about overcoming challenges and when we work on projects and things, I see that far too many kids give up and quit really quickly and really easily. And so it's something that's troubled me and has weighed on my mind quite a bit. And so that I've done lots of research and reading and, and talking to people to try to figure out what's going on and how I can help them through this process. And so this is kind of a culmination of experience and, and reading and, and learning to try to help people um, over, with their children overcome failure in their kids. Um, because today, right, when you think about failure, you think about sports and politics and and failure is a very, very negative thing, or so it appears, um, or so people think of failure as a very negative thing in today's life. And that is made even worse by the fact that we live in a culture where everything today comes in almost instantaneously, right? You get upset and agitated when your box doesn't arrive within two, within two business days, or your video doesn't download immediately. So all these things add to frustration in kids when the solution to a problem that they're trying to solve doesn't come easily. And so they're faced with this, with the possibility of failure. And so that's the topic of today is I'm gonna go through four things, four tips to help you and navigate failure with your kids. Um, and this is a really important topic. And as I said, it's one that's been really weighing on my mind. Uh, when we decided to do live video, uh, this is the first thing that came to my mind. It's the first thing I wrote down as a topic that I wanted to talk about uh, because it's one of the first things that's, that, that parents experience with their kids when they're trying out problem solving and STEAM activities. So here we go. Number one, the number one, tip number one for helping your kids overcome failure is to set yourself up as the guide and not the hero of the story. Now, I know this sounds a little funny and a little abstract to think about, but when I say setting yourself up as the guide and not the hero, many times when your children are, fa when children are faced with um, potential failure or disaster or problems, uh, you have parents th or guardians that swoop in and will solve the problem because it's, 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 it's ingrained within us. It's part of our, our DNA to want to protect our offspring, our children from failure, from hurt, from sorrow and aggravation. And so when we see them experiencing these things, we want to swoop in and clean it all up so that they are happy. Plus, unhappy children makes unhappy parents, right? <laughs> I know when my kids are running around screaming and angry, guess who's going to turn a little angry and probably running around the house screaming as well? Yep, that's right, this guy. So um, set yourself up, up as the guide and not the hero. What that means is if you've ever thought about superheroes in the movies, right? They always are, they always have a guide, like super, um, Superman had his dad. Did he have his dad? <laughs> that's not actually the example that I had on my mind. Oh, that's right. Batman. Batman had Alfred, his, <laughs> oh, so I had so many of these examples written down and I go to the one example that I didn't have written down. Silly me. Um, but Luke Skywalker had Yoda, Batman had Alfred, and the list goes on and on. They all had that person in the background that would kind of help them to navigate failure. And you'll also notice that the failure that, um, that every superhero had to overcome something. It wasn't 
they weren't perfect at everything and they all had something like Superman. Okay, now we're going to bring Superman into it. He had kryptonite. You know, Batman, he was always struggling with his inner demons. Um, Luke Skywalker had his own demons and he, well, he lost his hand and he was fighting a, a very difficult foe and he had to learn how to become a Jedi. So they all had this journey that they had to go on. And, and our children are just the same, is they've got to learn, they've got to grow and things aren't going to be easy. And it's important for them to understand that even superheroes have to go through this journey. So how... Um, so when I talk about you being the guide rather than the hero, what I mean is when things go difficult for your kids, rather than swooping in like a hero and saving them and solving their problems, you need to be the guide where you sit by them, you give them encouragement, you ask them questions, and you help them through the process, more like a, a background scenario like Alfred was to Batman, right? Um, this, of course, is important. Um, important, especially um, when when faced with failure. If uh, so, for example, here, here's a story. Um, I was working on this project, this steam project, with these kids, and they were supposed to make a catapult. But I didn't give them instructions, and I just gave them a whole bunch of this big tub of stuff to work with, and they had to build this catapult. Well, I had two different types of kids during this activity. I had one type of kid that when they were faced with this, um, they went right to work and they failed and they got back up and they tried something new, they did tweaking. And then I had this other type of kid, which really there was only this one kid in this, in this particular group who really struggled, who once his original idea didn't work, he just fell apart and he couldn't function. And he gave up and he wandered off and he went to play. And it was really discouraging, and that was kind of the that was kind of a, a watershed moment for me, where I decided, you know, I've got to I've got to figure this out. Um, and so that's why we're here today. But um, so setting yourself up as the guide and not the hero in that situation, what would be important is to sit yourself down with that student and ask, or with that that child, if it's your child or your student, and ask them questions. Ask them, hey. Uh, what's going on? How are you feeling? Um, ask them guiding questions. Be in the background, but don't solve the problem for them. It's important that they struggle a little bit, but not too much. I want to emphasize that if there's uh, if there's emotional or physical danger on the line, that yes, that should be that would be in a situation where you would want to swoop in and, and do something about it. But generally, you want to let your child fail. Let them fall down and um, work with them through that process, okay? So number one, set yourself up as the guide and not the hero. Parents, don't swoop in and solve your kids' problems. Let them do it. Be the guide. Number two, emphasize with your children that failing is only a step in the process and not the final outcome. Now, this one's really important because in sports, Failure is when you lose a game or in politics when you run for office and you don't win or the person you were voting for didn't make it. Um, many examples in today's society have failure as a final outcome. Well, kids need to learn that failure is not a final outcome, but is an important step in the learning process. So um, you can talk to your kids about the the process, what part failure plays in the role of learning and that it's only a step. So when a child does encounter failure, this is where you sit down and I call this the debrief. Um, I know, complicated word, right? But the debrief is where you talk about what happened with their failure, what caused it, why, and then most importantly, what they can do to become better next time. And then here's the critical step is you need to be able to, or they need to get back up on the horse immediately. If they're doing a project and they fail, don't let them leave and do the project another day. You don't want them to end on a sour note like that. Have them even if it's a small wind of figuring out some little piece to solve their problem 
end on a win and then they can maybe come back to the project later because I've learned from experience that kids will not come back to a project if they have a bad, a bad, excuse me, if, if they have a bad taste in their mouth from when they failed. Okay, so that's number two, emphasizing that failing is only a, a step in the process and not the final outcome. Number three, this is one that drives me, driveth me crazy because I see it so often. And sometimes I even find myself doing it. And then I have to slap myself on the wrist and say, don't do that, Mr. Ashby. Yeah, I know. I refer to myself in the third person. I say Mr. Ashby. But praising how you praise your kids and how often you praise your kids is extremely important. Um, I find that many people do it the wrong way. Now, I've done a lot of reading on how you should praise your children. And um, so this is not coming from me, but this is coming from research and from PhD professionals that psychologists that have studied this for years and years and years, just, just um, to make that clear. But praising, you must praise the effort, the work, and not the outcome. Praise what the, the children can control. Intelligence. Intelligence is generally thought of as a fixed thing. You know, people think, oh, you're smart or you're dumb. You, lots of times you'll hear you're, you will hear people that will say, I am smart in math, or I am, or I'm sorry, I am dumb in math. I just I just can't do it. They think of intelligence as this fixed thing. And when we praise the outcome we are reinforcing that and telling them. So like if you were to say, oh, you are so good at math or you are so good at English, what we're doing is we're telling them that they are um, good at something, but also when we don't tell them they're good at something, then they rely, then they think that they're bad at something. So I know I'm dancing because I'm not the PhD psychologist. How about I read this quote? In an article on Psychology Today, PhD Jim Taylor wrote, research has shown that how you praise your children has a powerful influence on their development. The Columbia University researchers, Claudia Mueller and Carol Duick, found that children who were praised for their intelligence as compared to their effort became overly focused on results. Following a failure, these same children persisted less, showed less enjoyment, attributed their failure to a lack of ability, which they believed they could not change and perform poorly in future achievement efforts. Says Duick, praising children for intelligence makes them fear difficulty because they begin, because they begin to equate failure with stupidity. So when children, when we praise them for their intelligence, they fear difficulty. And when they fear difficulty, they don't work as hard. Um, I know, um, several children who will not be named that really struggle with things that they feel that they are not good at. They don't give a good effort. They just mumble, oh, I'm no, I'm, I can't do this. I'm, I'm bad at math because of the culture that they've been raised in where they say fear, uh, where they've been praised for, oh, you're so smart. And so they believe when they hear that they're so smart in one thing, um, they believe that they can't change that. They believe that they can't change their ability. So what we must do, rather than praising intelligence, we must be praising their effort and talking about, oh, you worked so hard rather than you are so smart. And that will give them the fuel that they need and help them in their developmental process. Um, and one more thing I want to talk about failure or um, talk about praise is don't give it, keep it sparing. If you spare, if you are constantly praising them for every little thing they do, they're going to become praise junkies. I became, um, yeah, I'm a praise junkie when it comes to Facebook. When I pro post something on Facebook and I don't get a lot of likes or I don't get any likes, um, it makes me feel bad. And then I begin to doubt my self-worth. 
Well, if we're developing this mentality within our kids by constantly praising them for every single thing that they do, then they're going to become these praise junkies and really struggle when they're not praised. Okay, my final tip for overcoming failure within our kids is to be a good example yourself, right? Kids, they will pick up everything you do and say. If you want to know your mannerisms, just look at your kids. They will do, they are a direct mirror into how you act. So if you don't handle, if you, if you don't handle failure well, then your kids are going to pick that up. And if they see you quit, then they're going to quit. But if they see that you treat failure as a tool and that you're always working hard on it, um, on, on your projects and you, you always um, move forward rather than quitting, then they will develop that mentality naturally. And so you need to be a good mimic of that behavior. It's amazing to see the kind of things and the kind of behaviors that our children pick up from us. So just to recap, the four tips I have for helping you overcome failure within your kids is number one, set yourself up as the guide and not the hero. Number two, emphasize that failing is only a step in the process and not a final outcome. Number three, praise their hard work and not their intelligence. And number four, be a good example of failing gracefully or never quitting. So those are my four tips for today. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video, my soapbox on failure, and that you will uh, implement some of these things so that your kids can overcome this failure and develop this can-do-all attitude. Uh, this is Isaac Ashby, and I will see you later, guys. Bye.